Hello, this is Andrew here. Welcome to lecture seven in the Designing Digital Content in Youth Work module. This lecture, we're going to cover different stages of the, um, the production process and just kind of step into that really and see where we can um, <clears throat> mostly get an understanding of the, the, the principles about what you need. It's to work on <clears throat> different scale projects in each of the, the different kind of forms of media we've looked at so far with video, audio, and image-based softwares. Um, and also just to see how all this will relate back directly to youth work or working environments with, with young people in particular and to see how we can manage a production process in with regards to that. So I'm just going to start along those lines really um, and go back to the, the previous um, ladder of participation, like Harris' ladder, just to kind of use this to frame the, the next couple of um, you know, lectures around um, devising different sort of, you know, uh, different production process um, structures. And what what we see really quickly is what we can what we can really aim to achieve or to attain with you with the use of digital media in youth participation environments is ideally the top tier of this uh, model of participation and working backwards down towards tokenism, decoration, manipulation, being areas where, you know, in, in tradition, no one would, would really want to, to have any sort of, you know, work or involvement with young people at that end of this ladder. Um, but with the kind of the, the, a few things combining, mostly around the sophistication of the technology you're using, the, the, the young people being digitally native, um, you know, and this being something which is kind of somewhat inherent to them, um, all these things then combine to allow for much more youth-initiated projects, um, where they share decisions with adults and indeed educate you know youth workers and adults in the in in in, in the best practice in this. So throughout this lecture in the next, and it's things I've kind of spoken of before, I just want to throw away this, dispel this kind of conception that you need to be an expert in it before you begin. And just pair it right back to what would be considered, you know, best practice in more traditional lines of youth work or what sort of provisions would be, would be made to young people in order to, you know, best benefit them in their own personal development and in, you know, any sort of initiatives that would be going on within a, a youth centre. So we look, we're going to look at the top of the ladder and work backwards and just keep all this in mind as we go through the next couple of slides. And then obviously into the next lectures, I'll bring it up if it needs to as well. So we're looking at youth initiated shared decisions with adults. Below that, you'd have youth, youth initiated and directed. Adult initiated shared decisions with youth consulted and informed and signed, assigned but informed. Okay, so within all that area, we have loads of different degrees of participation. Group-based um, digital media projects in particular, but also things like, you know, acting or to do arts and crafts or like pre preparing for a show or something like this might be a kind of a shorthand to kind of, you'd be familiar with from other traditional youth work practices. Um, what we what we have with digital technologies is the ability to involve a great number of people potentially to involve a great number of people towards the top end of this model, but also bringing it right down to other young people who are kind of you know for whatever reasons mightn't have the the uh, interest, the direct interest, or you know the um, the, the 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 sort of the the, the competences or the confidence that they you take to go at something you know a bit more um complex from the outset so from our point of view as youth workers what we want to learn to do is to, to break apart the whole um production process to allow the majority of young people and i'm assuming we're working in groups now and i do this but i do speak on you know one-to-one -one involvements as well but we want to we want to endeavor to include the most number of young people possible to the best degree of participation, which would be youth, youth initiated shared decisions with adults. So that's the assumption that I'm working off with this. Everything below that can be kind of in terms of degrees of participation 
can be pulled in in terms of you know different and various roles in a group project or in a larger size production digital project and then everything below that the non-participation of the tokenism decoration the manipulation is not really on the cards whatsoever um and hopefully this all becomes a little bit clearer by the time we get to the to the end of this lecture so we're going to look at the stages of the production process um, you know, this is the, from my own experience, mostly this is what I'm working off between trying to do kind of higher end digital projects with young people, but also, you know, acknowledging the youth work element of this, which is the vital component still. And let's not forget this where it's, you know, we have to, we have to understand what we're arriving at really. So, um, just to break this down and I'm going to go through them one by one. We can see, you know, a brainstorm being a vital kind of component at start, building different frames of reference. So if it's being in popular culture or things that are like, you know, current affairs or issues that are a concern or, you know, things that are worries or general sort of fears or assumptions, assumptions, stereotypes, prejudice, whatever elements of this might come up through, um, you know, a discussion that a young person or a group of young people might want to respond to or um you know want to use a digital media project as much they would traditional sort of youth projects to kind of work through an issue and to understand it better and to be better able to uh, you know to articulate themselves in relation to that is all things that we need to look at so the next one then is kind of the um the scary one from the youth worker side you know and it related in a, in one sense, it looks like it's directly related to the to the to, to the some of the skills of the youth worker, and this is how to begin and when to begin and what that actually entails. So again, I just want to remove the pressure and stresses away from that and look at that a different way, and I'll get there accordingly. Then there's a, you know you kind of go into a different sort of interesting youth work model of a constant reevaluation of work that's been done and an evolving of the project, and this really sort of dynamic um, form of brainstorming and interaction where it could it emerges in a more of a, a youth led a scenario where they've taken full ownership over the project are becoming more and more aware of uh, the different aspects of the project be it you know the the topics that they're looking to discuss or to cover with the project but also in terms of the learning base itself and the different sort of skills and um you know different technologies that they might need to achieve this all this pushing towards some version of a finalizing and then completing of the project which is something which um you know it's a youth worker's job to really you know manage this aspect of it and this is where it can become quite difficult to to imagine a kind of production schedule to this because you know on the, on the surface you're looking at a lot of Let's think of the worst case scenario. There's only young, younger people who don't particularly know what they want to talk about and don't even know each other or don't have the skills for communicating towards each other around what they'd want to, want to do. And the youth worker having to kind of um, mediate around and towards all this and to provide certain sort of frames, all with a view to them buying into it and then getting too ambitious about what they might want to achieve from taking the frames of reference of like, be it a finished film production a music video or something with a budget and a lot of expertise behind it and becoming frustrated about how long and difficult it is taking to get to that position and this can happen in anything from say music production to making a documentary video or a dramatized video to you know to to, to having needing the means of equipment or even a budget to achieve what you're trying to do and then all this to be shared across um, a group of young people working in a team who are having to kind of learn personal and interpersonal skills and, uh, you know, communicate all this to each other um, at the same time as trying to, uh, you know, um, originate this digital project. So that can sound kind of really heady if we look at it that way. So it's essential that we break it down into its component parts. Um, all towards a presentation and again in the if in next lectures we look at the this the, those last two points of completing and finalizing something and kind of moving on to presentation of that um, for this lecture i'm just going to look at those first four points essentially with it so if we look at a brainstorm 
and we look at it in in a youth work setting in particular this is the most important aspect and one that will be ever present as the idea morphs and changes and um, it's something that youth workers would be familiar with in terms of you know forming new groups or a different sort of project or initiative elsewhere so you know there th th this is one thing that you don't need to essentially worry about because you do this in your in, in your day-to-day -day work with young people already it's where this applies to the next level of the digital and technical skills might be a bit more of an issue but essentially a brainstorm is still a brainstorm of what do we want to discuss? How do we want to discuss it? How broad can we make the discussion around that? And how informed uh, can we make that dialogue or uh, from a youth worker's perspective to find the areas within that discussion that need to be expanded upon in terms of be it, um, you know, education around issues or, you know, knowing what sort of sensitivities of those issues need to be picked up on and kind of developed into a different way, you know? But overall, it's the same. A brainstorm is a brainstorm where everyone's free and should be, uh, you know, should be encouraged to contribute at every single level of this. Now, the, where, with the difference between a brainstorm in a youth environment and you know in a different production would be not everyone would in a, in, a, in a more traditional or professional environment. The brainstorm would end after a while, and then you get down to a set number of tasks. Whereas I'd maintain that the brainstorm is the most important part of this, where all your of a youth work project, where all you're really doing is building more sort of crystal examples of the same thing um, as you go along. And this is something which is it allows for a full young youth ownership of the project as you see it emerging in front of their eyes. And then you can look at more and more refined and sophisticated versions of the discussion. And, if, you know, you could actually measure this next to the original starting points as the further you go along, leading to best practice evidence based youth work, essentially, which I'll get there in a moment as well. With that. But essentially, the brainstorm is where it is an ever present morphing, evolving and changing of ideas in relation to acquiring more knowledge experience and kind of confidence around discussing certain points around that so th the issue here is to make sure that you have a strong enough uh, foundation to grow from uh, by that i mean that there's a core idea and a context for a project to emerge from and that's all as a youth worker you really need to look at this is there what can be germed around really like if it's a we want to talk you you get a group of young people and they say we want to make a movie you go okay and then it's a, a case of about what it's like with well, something around bullying or around drugs or whatever sort of you know might be some sort of issue directly related to them already you have a kind of a very strong hook to put things around there or we want to make a, a song about mental health to take things as broadly as that before you kind of push down into it but as a starting point to have that core idea in a context for a project is kind of is, is very important and it allows you to kind of you know pull things in in a certain way and start to kind of um to 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 organize a production process in relation to this um particular choice of technology that they'd want to use next to a set of themes which are more traditional youth work so the only difference here really is that you're, all you're leaving open is what format would you like to do this in? What digital format is it? Would be it a game, a video, a still image, a poster, um, a performance which is recorded, a performance which has music prepared for it, um, you know, whatever level of games, or even on paper, just devising a game or devising a script or devising a song that doesn't come to this end. Just to be aware of all these sides of it, really. That's what we're going to get at. So the best versions of this will be the youth-led model. And this is, again, going back to that, the ladder of participation. This is what we want. And this will take as long as it takes, essentially. Um, it has to be instructive, dynamic, and constantly evolving from discussions with young people. So, for example, if you have a, a group of young people who've been pulled together to do a project or have, a, you know, in whatever sort of loose way have expressed an interest in working on a film or a different sort of digital project 
very quickly you see that the issue comes down to the both the personal and the interpersonal development of young people in this new environment essentially which is a non-formal education setting um dealing directly with 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 themes or you know issues that they want to discuss so all these are the kind of the vital component parts and that can um that has to be expanded as fully as possible now obviously that's something where it's quite abstract in one way and could get somewhat tedious to some young people who kind of understand these sort of processes quicker than others so then all of a sudden from a youth workers perspective it's a bit of a juggling act and this is where you know pulling in reference materials and supporting materials from the um from the real world i suppose are different examples of stuff allows a youth worker to have a different type of relationship with the young person in relation to work and to to get an understanding of who might take what sort of role in this so you might understand people are really good at thinking abstractly some people might have an awareness of like you know um you know advocacy issues or political sort of issues or, or, or relating to them or around a certain issue some might be more sensitive to the emotional side of it some might have a direct flair for you know visualizing stuff very very quickly some have probably been building computer games or you know editing and using different levels of audio or video editing and production tools in in isolation by themselves and have those sort of skill sets to bring to it and all you want to do then is to develop that conversation around that shared interests which they all have and then as a youth worker you're facilitating that and seeing what is appropriate and inappropriate to the project but also in terms of just allowing a critical thinking model to come across and for young people to begin to reassess the different types of media and digital media in particular that they would consume or look at or you know interpret or whatever and at the same time you're getting a feel for a best practice of different creative ideas of how you might uh, achieve one of these projects so i hope this is being clear enough in terms of um you know th 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 that's a vital part to me of like if it's a brainstorm and someone says instantly the frame of reference might go to you know i want to there is this particular thing that they're trying to discuss and the beauty with digital technology is you would have the internet right there with say youtube or a different thing open you would then encourage young people to go and pull back that information that they want to express or to discuss about it and then allow for a more elevated discussion about things which previous prior to that they had simply been consuming you know and this is where it becomes a really interesting conversation and should take as long as it takes and quickly you'd understand that the the level of like um media literacy you know of people's understanding young people's understanding in particular about how media is made and what it's meant to what it is trying to and what it is actually expressing or how other people might find things appropriate or inappropriate vulgar too sexualized for an age group or violent or whatever like that all those discussions can then come to the fore and something really involving can happen then um okay so in terms of the beginning of the project then and from a youth worker's side we, this is the question of what what format is this going to be is it going to be a video a visual arts piece a game an audio piece or a performance or a, some sort of combination of any of those formats which we'll have already seen between the practicals and through these lectures in particular where there's a massive crossover in terms of the technology there so that shouldn't be it's basically like you have a toolkit to kind of offer to young people this is where we look at and then in terms of what what theme some really generalized ones about advocacy youth rights bullying mental health but whatever that might be or even trying to get at the team is a really involving conversation that should have it should be part of any brainstorm or should continue as long as a brainstorm needs and everybody's comfortable to start making suggestions and then getting at something that they might want to work and all the time you're using digital media or the perspective of a digital media project as um you know some sort of safe space for these conversations to happen in an indirect way so i'll say that once more because it's a really interesting part you you're basically presenting the digital media different formats of digital media as a perspective project where young people can come in and use that brainstorm around that as a safe space to discuss various different issues they might have 
around digital media in particular are different aspects, different things that are affecting their lives and allowing for a more informed and articulate conversation around that. So afterwards, you're onto the kind of the, 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 the more creative stuff, for want of a better word, of what style or tone this is all going to be conducted in. If it's funny, if it's serious, if it's lighthearted, if it's a mix, mix of those things, if it's black humor, dark humor, um, you know, a documentary, whatever it might be. Um, and then this is the kind of the catch where you really see people taking ownership over the whole lot then because it's one thing to know the facts or to have a, an idea about what they want to do. The other is to have like a feeling and to have some sort of motivation towards what they want to do. But as soon as you start talking about style and tone and different things like that, then comes in a responsibility towards this type of work and to make sure that it delivers on what it says it's going to be. So say something like humor is a very interesting area here where you know, what would be considered humorous to one person might not necessarily be considered humorous to another. And therein is a full conversation for a youth worker to have with a group or issues that could be expanded upon within a group session and be really rewarding for all the young people there in terms of their their own sort of comprehension of things or their own critical thinking models in terms of how they would look at it or to see how other people might look at it, which is all a vital thing. So the last hook at the beginning really to take it is if you have chosen a format and a team and you've got a rough idea of a tone, then working all that towards some sort of a working title. And all you're really doing with a working title is you're putting a name on this particular thing because you're basically pulling them all out of more abstract ends. So to put a working title then enables um, young people to have their own sort of shorthand of how this might... Um, how this might all begin to come together and that's something which is kind of really unique to this particular project at this particular time and gives them a shorthand of how to um how they can relate to it in a handy and helpful way and allow the group to kind of you know um they can it just pulls it all into a better focus essentially and it doesn't as i said working titles the main thing because you don't want to kind of put any sort of pressure on any end of it right now you just want to keep it light but you want to acknowledge all the work that has been done at a certain level that's essentially what we're, we're trying to push towards here so this concept of constantly reevaluating as you go along is um is a is a is a bit of a vital one then of just to see, you know, reincorporating the brainstorm to refine an idea, to refine it further. And all these things are, again, very similar or close to what youth workers would do in a more traditional capacity of just kind of, you know, challenging young people and their perceptions of things essentially, where now we're doing it within particular project with a shorthand, with a lot of buy-in for young people who are now going to embark on the certain skill sets needed to produce a project in relation to all of this. So this constant re-evaluation should go on in, um, you know, on a, on, an, on, a, on a session by session basis and to just see what sort of changes you know, even to acknowledge what sort of changes in people's perceptions of what they're making next to what they thought they were making might well be. Um, then, you know, again, like I said, moving towards completing and finalizing the project. Again, these last two that we're going to look at again, to constantly reevaluate and complete and finalize, I'm going to take on elsewhere. But again, to try, or if it's a group project, to arrive at some sort of consensus of when something might be considered um, you know, completed or finalized. And these are kind of, you know, complex in themselves, but also allows for a different sort of understanding of like both personal, interpersonal, teamwork, communication, uh, articulating oneself and illustrating certain sort of points and having all that come across through work and application to themselves are all really vital experiences for young people in relation to, you know, working in a production process within a within a a, a youth work environment and you know de de delivering a collective effort of a you know a digital project so just to break down really quickly um you know it's too it's too complex to go into all of this in great detail but i just want to give a shorthand of 
what would be you know what would it be entailed for a, for a film uh, an audio project and a sound uh, for and a um a still image project really where we're looking at the film one is essentially you know culminates a lot of the the things that you'd have in 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 the other two basically and it's a bit where you've you you, you need more people like cast and crew to make this actually happen so there's a little bit more coordination which just means there's a bit more pre-production which is everything up until the actual shoot of, of a film or a, a documentary or like that and then post-production which is everything that happens after you stop recording and you have all your material so you go through the brainstorm process as we discussed one is in relation to the broader issues and the other is in relation to the specifics of how creative and what type of shot this might be or what even the story might be about then the script writing and drafting this sort of stuff and this is the idea the difference between the you know drafting it where it's one thing to write it once and it's the other to kind of refine it and refine it to refine the idea to get a full understanding of it and also to build up a certain resilience and a tolerance to how this process is done rather than you press a button and it comes out the other end that it's much more involving and you know it takes more um more input than that so you don't want to give people the wrong impression that something's going to happen really fast and all by itself. The storyboarding is optional, but it does help to just kind of visualize this linear thing that might be still quite abstract to some people. And again, you get a real impression of some young people have quite a flair for either drawing them or imagining ideas this way and others, um, you know, have a different a flair in a different direction to be able to prepare the script or you know the interchangeable nature between the storyboarding and the script writing can kind of come to the come to the fore like that and as i said the redrafting can all be done you know in advance of leading up to a scheduled shoot or you know the production itself kicking in whereas if you're talking about a documentary that might involve you know people that you're having to interview in certain places with an interviewer and, you know, that not necessarily being like two days that you can get everything done back to back in because you're at the behest of other people's time. You might need to travel to other parts of the city to get those interviews or you might be waiting on a number of people to come to you. But if it's a more drama based thing or something, which is, you know, a creative end like that, you could allot a certain amount of time, be it two to three to five days for a shoot with actors and have all the crew or whatever and all the equipment in place for that particular time so that's going to kind of focus a lot of your time on that which allows more time to refine storyboards scripts and even rehearsals with actors and for you know directors or people who are doing who are doing specific roles like the art and costume design whatever ends of it like that operating cameras learning to use sound equipment whatever end that they're actually using that they've more time to become a bit more adept and practice with that in advance all the time leading up with something with a real dynamic and you know something to kind of keep a focus on which would be this shoot in particular so again just to remind you then straight after that the more tedious aspect kicks in of um the length of time it might take to pull an edit of all this together and it kind of intuitively enough this all goes back to the brainstorm and the script writing process where you're essentially going to write the film again in the edit because there's be there will be things that you wanted to film that you didn't get and there'll be other things which were not emerged as nice surprises when you are filming that need to be included now or simply just seeing a lot of the material shot and put together begins to make everyone think slightly differently about the project and see that it's you know one part has emerged as something more prominent than was previously known and that can be a very interesting process so the edit again is much like back to the start of brainstorming and writing to some degree but obviously you have that other additional technical thing of having to need a computer with a certain amount of hard drive and ram space to pull all this together um, and someone with the who's learning those skills to actually do that so in terms of a youth worker, just to kind of flag that with this, that is essentially the only worry that you'd have is right up to, you know, being able to operate a camera and an audio recorder are things that between tutorials and technology that someone might have on a phone or in, in any sort of a device, or indeed just have versions of these kind of cameras in their youth center, or it can be, can be borrowed for the duration of a, a film like that. 
there's not really any sort of technical push or anything that would stop a youth worker from saying you can't do it to this point. It's when the edit kicks in, then that things get a little bit more complex right now. But if we're looking at this over a period of time and saying, you know, if we allocated, you know, three days to each one of those um, processes before from brainstorm, script writing, storyboarding, script redrafting, cast and crew rehearsals, towards the shoot you have three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen days essentially before you're anywhere near the edit so just plenty of time to be evolving a process around that as well you know and even going as far as the next one of special effects or into the sound mix and getting really creative then because once you understand how to edit then all you want to do is be really creative with it and likewise we're putting titles on it and for the whole thing to be mixed and put together and just output it as a film so i don't mean to be kind of too um off the cuff about this but i do just want to kind of give that sort of a breakdown of here is a flow if you wanted to do something to that sort of a degree and anyone who is particularly interested in this stuff i could provide them with more involving templates and different materials with that but essentially just to kind of sketch out that that is the scale of that production process and, and this one being the lengthiest one out of the lot um and you know you look at the amount of people that can be brought into uh into a project like that and how exciting that can be so it just comes down to the planning and the staging and making sure that it's led by the the people who have a, a, a an interest in doing it being the vital parts of that now, on a shorter note, just in terms of stages of an audio production process, we have recording the audio elements, which could be a microphone in a studio or field recording or any sort of, you know, say if you want to do a radio documentary where you'd be off getting interviews and doing recordings elsewhere or taking different sounds or different effects. Or it could be you want to record a, a music track and that could be just processing audio elements like generating sounds within the computer using sampling whatever and like that then the next is obviously the editing again which is where all these pieces are aligned and you know it's essentially is rewritten in this stage again where you want to pull it all together to the best possible degree and then mix it where you want to kind of bring out particular sounds or you want to find how this is all kind of fitting together in a more advanced way and putting layers upon layers on it, much like we would with um, image elements within a still image process. And then the last one being kind of the, the most professional finish, I suppose, in terms of the polish of it, which is mastering. And again, there's a shorthand of like, you know, what sounds need to be getting rid of hiss and background homes if it's like a recording refriger refrigerator electricity noises all these different sounds that creep in that take the clarity of sound away working with eq or different sort of um compressor plugins to enhance voices say or whatever so there's a whole list of things again which you can kick in to kind of master and all you're essentially doing is making something more uh, you know polished in the end and that's essentially what's what, what, what all that's going to arrive up to mastering likewise with an image process creating the original artwork be it a you know traditional arts medium or photography or in within a computer or collage all being like getting the the actual materials that you're going to work with in a, in an image editing environment editing them together so it might be a case of combining a few of these or whatever it is um like a um then enhancing the image images between colors brightness contrast putting different sorts of effects on it blur effects kind of darkening areas lighting areas whatever way you want to put the prominence and playing around with those images bringing other additional features in like other images or different effects and text into that as well and then finally um flattening compressing and outputting the final image either for a digital print file or outputting it for digital display. So there your process stages essentially of what you're gonna start with and where you're gonna end. And that all you need to know is that all, all that can be then broken apart, compartmentalized, put into the into the hands of young people who have the, um, the interest mostly, and then access to the equipment and the safety to kind of, the, the, the safest space to kind of spend time and look at these sorts of things, combine it and bring it all together. And then for you to kind of just stay 
you know, on top of that in terms of the production process and just being prepared for a session, essentially. That's what we want to bring it down to. Not some new additional skill that you have to know everything about before you begin. So I just want to impress that on you really with this one. The next lectures are going to take up on that a little bit further, in particular with reevaluating it and just kind of, you know, really polishing a project. And that's where, you know, the, the, the additional skills can be learned while you're doing it. And likewise, we're completing and finalizing it and showcasing it again. So we get at that in the next two lectures. So the next one would be project-based work and realistic deadlines. Okay, um, there is a practical with this. Um, sorry, I got cut off there. There's a practical with the uh, with with this with accompanying this uh, lecture which will be on audio production introductions so um i'll see you there and then we'll take up on these issues in the next one sorry i got a bit confused there on the project-based work and realistic deadlines we'll take up on these issues again okay thank you uh, any questions in between please feel free to email me okay bye